everyone, welcome back to Deep Roots. You are in control? Maybe. Maybe you aren't in control. Maybe you don't even know if you're in control, or if you're not in control at any given point. <sighs> this is confusing. But it's a popular conversation today. Asking if we have this thing that we call free will. Free will is this freedom to choose whatever we want to do. But a lot of people question our free will, like if we have any at all, or if it even matters whether or not we have free will. We talk about all these things on today's episode. But no matter what you think on the topic, there's always options. Like the option to submit your own anonymous questions to Deeper Roots. You can submit your own questions online on our form, and then your question will get answered right here on the podcast. Just go to www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. There, you'll find the form as well as the rest of our episodes and the platforms that you can find us on. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us here on Deeper Roots. Let's get to the conversation. Welcome back to Deeper Roots. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We have myself, we have Pastor Louise here, and we also have Esther here today joining us on the, the Deeper Roots cast. Uh, today, we have um, we have a question from a uh, anonymous listener, and they said, Why do we surrender our free will to God if he gave it to us in the first place? They go on to clarify, he wants to do things, he wants us to do things according to his will, and if we don't, we go to hell. Pastor, do you want to comment first? All right, very good. Um, there's a lot to unpack there, first of all, when it comes to the question, because uh, first it deals with free will. Second, it deals with um, then uh, in that in relation to obedience to God and then the consequences of disobedience or not uh, repenting in the, in the case of uh, eternal destiny, uh, going to hell if you don't uh, believe in Jesus Christ. So I guess the first thing we need to talk about is free will. Uh, and uh, understanding free will from the biblical standpoint. Uh, so, I always like to ask questions. So, Esther, <laughs> where does free will come from? Free will came to us by our Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. So, I'm talking about sin specifically. Um, without the Lord, we are slaves to sin and we f you know we give in to what the flesh asks of us we don't have the supernatural power nor the knowledge to do you know differently now if you just ask me free will like do i want to go get ice cream or not <laughs> that's you know um it comes from desires what your desire you know what desires you have okay uh, brother derek free will what, what's your th uh, initial thoughts on free will uh, is existence uh, there's mm -hmm. some people that don't believe in free will believe it or not yeah um, they believe that everything's predetermined we're all basically just living out a a uh, play or a uh, certain uh, thing that's sort of been set into motion mm -hmm. by a un unknown god to most of the people believe that they believe uh, they're agnostic or they don't believe that, that god can actually be known and uh, basically we're just living out a predetermined existence yeah so when it comes to free will, I uh, I personally believe that there's a, that we have our own free will. That even though it can be affected by previous actions and previous uh, previous influences and experiences, it does amount to us making our own free choices. Um, and I believe that came at the moment of our creation um, when. Like right from the beginning, we obviously have our own influences. We obviously have our own uh, our own reasons for doing things and forgetting things, or like whether that is for given reason or if it is a uh, um, just something that ends up happening because we, we don't try to forget things. At least certain. Never mind. I'll get off of that boat. Um, <laughs> so, but I do know that there are there are a lot of people who uh, believe that. Uh, we don't have free will. 
uh, or at least we don't have free will to the same extent that I believe we do. Um, there are some people who believe that um, because we are we are slaves to uh, not necessarily because some people don't believe in sin, right? Some people believe that that we are slaves to our pri- uh, to our pre- prior experiences, uh, things that happened to us. Experience, uh, yeah. Uh, just uh, we've lost our free will when uh, things are set in motion because we are prone to uh, do things because of other things everything there's a lot of causality in this world and everything is caused by something else like um how life was and uh ended up being created as a cause um, as a result of the big bang in their uh in their logic mm-hmm well, when we come to those scriptures, uh, Genesis one twenty six, we always go, go back there, the creation, where it says, "God and God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, then let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God uh, sets things in motion, like you said, but he sets things in motion in a certain design or way where he creates man in his image. So part of that image is having free will, right? It wasn't just the creativity and having uh, the three-part nature to mankind, body, soul, and spirit, but also just having free will. And we're not only we're not the only ones that have free will. Also, the angels uh, were created with free will as well. Mm-hmm. They, so they have an opportunity to choose between two uh, options or whatever options are presented to them. And uh, so then when it comes to free will, if we really don't have free will and if we really don't have uh, that, why do we fight so much for something very related to it, which is freedom? Have you ever thought of that, right? We value freedom so much. We value the freedom to choose uh, whatever you want. You know, abortion debate, choose who you marry, choose this, choose that. Why battle for freedoms when there is no such thing as free will to begin with? Uh, and so the Bible does teach there is a free will. Uh, we do choose. Uh, we, d- we have been given the ability to choose our destiny one way or another. But uh, the thing is that sometimes we just don't like it in relation to, to God. We want our own freedoms and we want our own uh, ability to choose our path or wherever. But when it comes to God, that's where we sort of say, "Uh, uh-uh, I don't, I don't want God telling me what to do." And I think that's sort of what the re- the question is related to from our listener, where he says, "Then why does God?" Uh, he or she says, "Why does God then say uh, we have to obey Him or else we go to hell?" Right. So, what do you read into that que- that part of the question, Esther? I think uh, depending if this um, listener is a believer or not, there could be some confusion Um, only because, well, I guess how you see the question, because now that I'm thinking about it, free will to choose God or not. And if you choose not, you do go to hell. But the initial reaction for me when I read this question was a believer believes that you will go to hell because you don't do what God tells you, right? Was my initial response to this. But if you look at the question differently, meaning if people, and they do, people get to choose God or not, and those that choose not do go to hell, which is a true statement. So to our listener, we don't know who our listener is, but we just wanted to start by, by saying, you know, that you do not go to hell based on what you do or don't do. Whether you obey God or not, in general, as we're talking about uh, works, right? Uh, because when we're talking about salvation or your eternal destiny, uh, where you your soul will go the day you die, uh, that is determined not by what you've done or not done as far as works, but as far as where you have deposited your faith. And that's what Galatians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9 says, for we are saved by by uh, grace through faith and this is not of ourselves what is it is a gift of god not by works lest any man should boast so just that's important to understand the the clarity that we are not saved through what we do Mm -hmm. but instead of who we have believed in or where we have deposited our faith in and everybody deposits their faith in something there's no such uh, person that can say i don't believe 
uh, in something where you're where you're depositing in and exercising faith. So we all have faith in something, whether it's in God, whether it's myself, whether I believe there is no free will and we're all just predetermined and blah, blah, blah. That's something you're stating by faith because you can't prove it. Right. So. When it comes to faith um, uh, and in your eternal dis- destiny, that's what's going to be determined. Uh, determinant where your faith is it, is on, and and that's where the gospel comes in. That Jesus knew that none of us could ever do anything to save ourselves, and therefore He loved the world and gave His sac- sac- His Son as a sacrifice, so that He would die and take our sin. Right. So then, that's where the choice comes in: whether we choose to accept the sacrifice. Or we choose to reject the sacrifice, whether we choose to to deposit our faith in him and saying, Jesus, thank you, because you took my penalty and I accept it. Or whether I say, I don't believe that and I'm going to I'm fine the way I am or I'm going to find my own way to to heaven or whatever or my, my destiny. And there you're exercising what free will. Mm-hmm. That's where you exercise free will. So it goes back to that question does god want does god want anybody to go to hell no god doesn't want anybody to go to hell but second peter says that clearly he doesn't want anybody to perish but that all proceed to repentance and we have to understand that that god's not in the business of sending anybody to hell he already paved the way for us to have an out to have an ability to have salvation but that's where we have to choose uh and that's the gift of of choice it really is a a beautiful choice that god gave you and you wouldn't want it any other way because if you take choice away if you take uh, free will away then we're you're asking for a kind of existence that is very different from the one not only you experience but you even fight for which is wanting to determine your own life and 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 liberties and the things of having uh, not people tell you what to do that's all comes from free will so in 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 a nutshell that's that's, that's what i would say to this listener anything else comments? um i did want to ask so this is the way that a lot of people can see like see the idea of salvation where like if you uh, don't accept christ then you go to hell right and like that's a that's a logical there's a there's a logic there there's an objective logical way uh, uh thing to think about because the way that us christians we talk about it is like if we accept christ then we go to heaven right and then that's the net positive but the flip side of that is if we don't accept christ we go to hell so is accepting god's gift of salvation an infringement of our or like the the presentation of god's gift of salvation an infringement of our own free will uh, because to uh, non-believers, it sounds like a threat. No, it's like if you threat. don't go to, if you don't accept, you go to hell. No, it, it is a gift. That's what Ephesians two says. It is a gift from God. It's not a threat. Uh, it's like it's like saying, uh, basically, you are in a huge amount of debt right now, mm-hmm. and you're about to get imprisoned for it because you have no way to pay for it. And, and I come up with a check and say, here, let me pay for it. Mm-hmm. That's not a threat. Mm-hmm. How is that a threat to you? Basically saying, I'm giving you an out to mm-hmm. a consequence that is ine- inevitable based on your actions, so, not my actions. It's the actions, whatever actions you took to get yourself into that debt, you have to pay. But we didn't create hell. No, he didn't create hell, but, so, it, but it exists because evil has to be paid for. Mm-hmm. Exa- like same, mm-hmm. same like, I mean, it. just take a look at the, why do jails exist? Why does uh, prisons exist? I know there's a debate now where we could say, well, we can go and put them in rehab centers or whatever. Well, why, and then why does rehab centers exist and force them to be there for a certain amount of time? Well, you've taken away their free will and made them uh, do that is because mm-hmm. they have to do pay for something they did. And uh, we understand it in the human level. We just don't like it when it comes to the uh, the spiritual level. Mm-hmm. We sort of want a, a, an out and want God just to say, okay, everybody sins and it's okay with me. And it's not. You know, we have to understand that God hates sin. And, and sin is, a, is, is something that needs to be paid for, just like any evil needs to be paid for on earth when a a law is broken right Uh, it needs to be paid for so then 
if I give you an out to that, which sounds horrible, like if any 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 uh, case you can think of right now, of someone who's done something horrendous, and they have to pay for that evil, and and we understand that we would even celebrate it right now with all the police shootings and stuff. When those so some of the police people, um, what's it called, got uh, they got con- uh, was convicted and now they're in jail, right? Mm-hmm. Some of those, those cases. I don't see anybody saying, oh, poor poor people. We celebrate the fact that we are executing justice, Mm -hmm. right? So why? Because there is evil needs to be paid for. And that, where does that come from? Like the chicken and the egg. God didn't copy that from us. We copied that from him. There's evil that needs to be paid for. And we just don't understand it because we think that what we do to God should not matter. And it does matter. And that's why evil has to be paid for. But, like I said, the the, the, the example there is if someone goes and sit, offers you an out and says, here, I'm going to pay for you instead. You choosing that and choosing the, the path of forgiveness uh, to being forgiven and, and being able to, ch- to not have to pay is not a threat. It's a gift. I mean, if you, it's easy to... To condemn someone else when it's not you, but when it's you, you you understand really what grace is when someone offers you a gift like that, that you don't have to pay. Okay. So, uh, another uh, follow-up question that I have would be, uh, what, I'm trying to word this that way I can narrow it, like, that way it's, it's broad enough where it doesn't feel like it's a leading question. Um how can uh, people infringe our on our free will what do you mean like it's a, sorry i'm trying to so uh, there has been a lot of talk about like policies and there's been a lot of talk about uh, about um especially with like the roe v wade situation mm-hmm. going on right um where uh, there has been uh, this uh it's been this Generation long question: pro choice versus pro uh, uh, pro life, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, when uh, we take a look at the argument, we always see like the um, pro uh, uh, pro life is always like the conservatives, it's the Christians, it's uh, and uh, the the argument had and they have their argument. But on the other side, we always have pro choice. But when we think about free will, it's the freedom to choose. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if we're talking about freedom of choice, that kind of sounds like the pro-choice side. Mm-hmm. So, I'm trying to think, like, when when is it okay to infringe on another person's free will? When, in, when it causes something to be evil. Mm-hmm. When it causes something to violate our moral standards as human beings which that can be debated the problem with yeah. our nation today is that everybody wants to debate what's morally right mm-hmm. based on only on human level and where that's the fall- fallacy in the whole problem because then if we're just going to talk on the human level who are you to tell me what is right and wrong mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and who am i to tell you what's right and wrong who is, who is the left to tell us that abortion's right and who is the right to tell us that abortion's wrong if we're gonna, just going to leave it at the at the human level, there's no, and that's why we have the problems we have, because we don't go up to a higher standard. And when we do believe in God, and we believe there is a God who is morally authoritative uh, over us and has the right to be a, a morally authoritative over us, that's where we define what is evil and what's wrong based not on our opinion, but based on His opinion, mm-hmm. and then. I know uh, when it comes to abortion, we might still have in that that debate. But then you could use that same argument. Then when when why is it is it wrong to to infringe on someone's uh, freedom to want to kill? Mm-hmm. Why? And that's where the abortion debate comes in because we believe it is a, a, it is killing an innocent child. It is murder, and we 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 just don't agree on with whether that fetus is a person. And it is a child. That's where the debate comes from. But we all do agree that murder is wrong in society. Still, mm-hmm. we still agree that uh, to that. We still agree that m- morally it is wrong to kill, right? It's just yeah. that the debate comes from whether that baby or that fetus is a, a person or not, right? So then our freedom 
do and when it um, uh, infringes on a moral uh, higher law, right? And that's what we have to understand that it, yes, we have freedom to choose between evil and, 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 and wrong. And government's role is to restrain evil. I think that's going to go with more with our second episode we're going to record today. It's to, re- record, to restrain evil. Mm-hmm. That's the role of government. But um, but it's and, and and yes to punish evil reward good, but still we have to we have to choose and we all have a, all life is a series of choices mm-hmm. that we have to do through free will and we suffer the consequences good or bad and we understand it in many other levels. You choose to wake up in the morning and go to work, right? Yeah. Or, or did someone force you to do that? Um. Yes. <laughs> How? <laughs> uh, the way the society works today, capitalism. No, society didn't come choose, in and tell you get to. up. <laughs> but then I'll be homeless. It's basically a, well, I mean, that's, that's your that's choice. Your that that is what it choice. is. You it's have a made choice. a determination based on your freedom mm-hmm. that you don't want to be homeless, and that that's not a lifestyle that you want to pursue. Mm-hmm. And therefore, you choose to go to work and 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 believe in the reward that comes from that. Which is money, right? Okay. And then it's there's no such thing as oh someone's forcing you. Mm-hmm. We all choose. Even as believers, God is so good. We still have freedom to do right and wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Even as believers, you know, talk about God's will in our life as believers. It's our daily choices that decide if we are in God's will. We know the right things and the wrong. Obviously, there are bigger questions like. Who am I going to get married with? That takes a little bit more time, right? (laughs) But we know it is right and wrong. And even then, just a reminder that we do have free will. We can be Christians and living a very worldly life, you know? And God Mm -hmm. still has mercy and grace, and he's still good with us. So the free will continues even on when we become believers of making those choices every day. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um. I had one, and then uh, we had another point, and then uh, uh, no, I forgot the point. I forgot the question, but do you have any other things you want to comment while I try to remember something or that try to come up great, with another follow-up great, question? That it's a great, great uh, question when it comes to uh, free will. It's just it's good to use comparisons to our everyday life and ask ourselves. Um, when it comes to questioning free will in relation to God, and that God gave us a choice. He gave us a choice. Choose good, choose, e- choose evil. That goes back to the Garden of Eden. Why does God give them the guard, the, the the tree of good of the of the good knowledge of good and evil to begin with? Why did, why does He put it in there? It was so that they would know how to exercise their choice. That refusing to give them a choice would be infringing on free will. Mm-hmm. So. Imagine if God didn't cho- chose, never presented to them the, the opportunity to disobey him. Mm-hmm. Then that we would be asking for a uh, different kind of existence. So an existence where obedience to him is the only choice. Is the only choice to obey him. And that would not be the kind of existence none of us actually would want. Because it's sort of like saying, okay, the government is going to tell us exactly what to do and not t- give us any other choice on it on okay. every single point of your life, you know, and never give you any options of anything. We we value that in our everyday life. So mm-hmm. it is, uh, that's why God had to present Adam and Eve with that choice, an opportunity to choose evil if he truly was going to give them free will or else it wouldn't be free will at all. Okay. Um this isn't the question that I had thought of earlier, but it is one because you're talking about like the freedom to exercise our own free will. And that kind of just turned into a different set of thoughts. Um, is free will an exercise that we need to? Is, is free will like a, some sort of like a muscle we need to exercise? No. <laughs> okay. It's innate in its it's, yeah, I think it's uh, it's what, what what's the word? Innate. 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 Maybe yeah, maybe then what I'm talking about is like the the way to use it because yes. yeah <laughs> yes yeah okay using your free will for good oh, and for no. good choices Choosing is oh yeah I I know someone right now that's going through some things and it's like bad choices that he that he made and it's like wow it's just so sad to see him having to suffer through the consequences mm-hmm. of his choices. Is it? Do you think it's possible that it will rebound? What do you mean? Like, I, like that are the choices that we make, we can end up rebounding. Like, yes. Well, see, that's the thing. Yeah. I have an opportunity right now with mm-hmm. this person to influence him. 
And that's what I'm saying because he's just starting off in this country, trying to make his way through his uh, through this country, and and trying to erase a lot of bad decisions he made back in his home country. Mm-hmm. And I'm all like, you know, and what well, this is, God is my witness. This is one of the things I said about you have to change the way you make your decisions, mm-hmm. because here in this country you're trying to erase the bad decisions from your other country, but here, if you try to make those same kind of mistakes here and those don't you don't erase those same patterns of bad choice making. This country will make you pay for them even harder, you know, mm-hmm. because here there's a lot of accountability. You can't go around the system as easily as you can mm-hmm. in other countries. And, and we you have can't do things the same way. Yeah, we <laughs> well, have examples in the Bible of people yeah. who have done horrendous mistakes and they were able, you know, God blessed them, restored them. Yeah. And that's the God that we have. Ruth. I was just mm-hmm. referring to Ruth this morning with someone. And it's like, mm-hmm. Ruth, you know, it's, it's never too late to mm-hmm. go back to the house of bread. Yeah. You know, they she, they made a horrible mistake in leaving Bethlehem mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and going they to paid. Moab. Yeah, and they, they paid, paid for it. For it. Yeah. You know, this uh, consequences, and mm-hmm. and and maybe this is worth also saying in this episode. Now, when it comes to the consequences, it's not that it's not that God is punishing you literally, like with a whip from heaven, mm-hmm. saying, "Oh, suffer." No, it's just that those are the natural consequences of thi- of, mm-hmm. of how things will turn out mm-hmm. if we make those uh, a certain yes. choice or another. He knows every path we might take. It's sort of like the what they call the multiverse <laughs> multiverse sure. uh, uh, theory, right? Yes, he knows every possible consequence that will result from every single decision. So he's already traced out the best one for us. And and, 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 and he knows that we have to cho- we have to make wise choices so that we end up with the right results. If not, then we have to deal with the results we we chose, you know, because it's just that's the natural consequence of our choice. Not so much as punishments, just the natural course of where that decision takes us. Eventually, it's like the positive, you get positive out of it. So, mm-hmm. just thinking about that, and hence our encouragement to the young people. We talk about this all the time with the young people. You guys are making big choices, big decisions in your life, and wanting to choose God's will for you is important. You know, otherwise, there's consequences, there's good consequences. or bad. So. We talk about like the the consequences of our actions, right? But people who uh, is it? I know that like, this is like a, a yes question, but I want to want to uh, go into it a little bit more. Uh, it's is it possible for uh, people to uh, take on uh, the consequences of other people's actions? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's a yes question, but like, I want to I want to talk about it a little bit yes, more. Yes, yes, I know. Like we, um, we have like um, there's like situation like many situations like across here in America, and we're like people say like if you work harder, you will not be poor. If you work harder than the person next to you, then uh, you will be richer, or you will have uh, a greater wealth in one way or another mm-hmm. than the person next to you, right? Yeah. Um, but that more often than not nowadays doesn't happen it's more about uh where you came from what connections you can you have all that kind of thing true i mean we can talk about it in that in that um respect you know but even there you know it's there's multiple stories of people who defy the odds and they say i'm not gonna let my circumstances determine my path you know mm-hmm. and, the, and, and 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 yeah you don't have to be a victim to your circumstances but we are victim to circumstances many times mm-hmm. uh, like you said to answer your questions yes can we be affected by other people's decisions of course but we choose then and back to this the the gift of free will we choose to whether let those consequences do us in or to use that as a point of, 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 of change and motivation. And, and I mean, you, you have multiple examples it just in the secular world. People who came from drugs and came from, from the projects and, 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 and who made them, so, they refused to make them, let that define them. Mm-hmm. And then you have multiple other choices who let that circumstances define them and, 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 and keep them in that, in that situation. So the yes, uh, yes, we other people's actions can affect us, and because we live in a broken world, and I think that's why Jesus said, "Love your neighbor as you love yourself." He tells the church that we need to be there for each other, and not just be there uh, in 
seek our own interests, but to seek the interests of others. Because the sin of one, the, uh, the, the, the decisions of one can affect another. But that doesn't mean that you, if you were the victim of someone else's decisions, have to let that define you. It will be harder, maybe. Mm-hmm. You will suffer. You'll have to go through maybe healing of wounds that were caused to you. But that's where you have to... Uh, where, where we have to uh, come to Jesus and say and, and claim his promises where he says that to uh, those who love God all things can work together for good Romans 8 28 and, and and he's the only one that can truly make a masterpiece out of a tragedy and uh, and that's where we have to understand that that we we also exercise free choices there whether we allow other people's bad decisions do us in mm-hmm. Or whether we choose to not let that define us, which goes into a topic we were talking about earlier about identity. Or uh, that, you know, like when I talk about identity, we were talking a little bit about earlier. Uh, we come from different backgrounds. Esther comes from things she went through. I came from different things I, they went through. But we have chosen whether that's going to let us define, define us or not. Uh, and because it would have easily could have defined us as well. Mm-hmm. could have defined us and led us down a different very different path which we would not be uh, at peace and hap- and and healed as we have found in, in Christ Jesus okay um so do you have any other notes you want to add okay uh well thank you for uh, listening in this uh this week of deeper roots um we hope that there was a lot to learn in this episode i definitely had a uh, there was some um, definitely points where i couldn't use some of the lessons that we learned in the, uh, in this episode and i pray that uh you also learn some lessons or l- learn something from this episode uh if you want to submit your own questions uh to the deeper roots podcast you can and it's completely anonymous and it's completely free and you can do it at uh, www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots again thank you for joining us and uh, hope that uh you listen next week thank you Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Vidanueva, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.